Hi guys, Niall here from murraymorrisworth.com. Today I'm going to build a Simrace Components SRC One Plus chassis. So it's the entry level rig in, in SRC's full range. So they also do one for like a single seater type seat position or a GT one with a stiffer alloy in it and kind of more for the professional type sim racer. Uh, whereas the One Plus is, is perfect for someone looking to either start out in sim racing or maybe you have a, a desk or kind of a homemade wooden type frame or something that you're using at the minute. And um, this one is perfect as it's really at the right price point where it doesn't break the bank, um, but it is still um, the proper piece of kit as well. So we'll jump right, right into it. So the chassis is supplied in two boxes, and the longer box basically has all your, your longer pieces of alloy um, extrusion and stuff, and the, the smaller boxes, obviously smaller bits, some of the alloy plates and nuts and bolts and, and brackets and stuff like that as well. Um, so all you really need uh, tool-wise to build these kits is some sort of a knife or a scissors or something just to open the boxes and um, a measuring tape if you want to kind of be a bit exact and um, basically a set of allen keys is all you really need and um, i like to use a small screwdriver as well just sometimes as you'll see later on in the video and um, it can be a bit difficult to move around some of the nuts and stuff in the in the alloy channel so a little screwdriver or even one of the small allen keys is, is handy to have so the first thing really is to just open the boxes lay everything out um, there is an instruction manual that's, uh, that you can download from our website in the um, attachments tab on, the, on, on each product. So all the SRC products have, have instruction manuals there. Um, I would advise to, to download them and have a read through them. Um, they basically just tell you what, what pieces are, are, are to go where. So yeah, basically just op op open all the boxes and lay everything out and try to figure out what's what. So as you can see, all the profile is labelled, and um, so all we're worried about at the minute is uh, profiles A, B, and C. So I'll just put everything else to the side for the minute. So the A piece is running uh, the full length of the chassis and then you have uh, profile B and C that basically uh, make like a box section here where the seat uh, bolts onto as well. So we just want to separate these two and B and C are the same anyway so it doesn't matter what you use. So if we separate out all the nuts and bolts that are in the, uh, the kind of accessory box you'll see they all have, uh, they're all bagged and tagged and they all have labels on them. And so there's two different types of nuts, so there's ones that bag say, says 13 by 13 um, so they're basically square, um, obviously 13 mil by 13 mil is the size of them, um, and they have kind of a little, a little uh, kind of a tab coming off them that basically act like a spring. Um, so therefore, somewhere where it's where it's hard to put in the uh, the nuts, you use these ones. And the other type are more rectang rectangular, so they don't have any um, sort of a spring mechanism on them, and they're just called 13 by 25. Um, and then there's different types of bolts and stuff as well. So in the instructions, it tells you which ones to use. But in order to get these uh, these kind of cross pieces bolted onto the main A pieces, we'll call them, um, use these corner brackets that are basically anti-rotation sort of brackets with little uh, tabs on them, so they can't actually twist once they they get go into the groove of the alloy. They can't actually twist anywhere, and um, they lock in. They go really really tight. So we use these brackets, and we're going to use the. M8 by 20 TR uh, bolts, so just be careful which bolt you use because there's a couple of different types and uh, basically just different heads on them. So again, in the instructions it tells you which ones to use at, 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 at which stage. So um, at this stage we're going to just um, build up a couple of these brackets with nuts and bolts already on them um, and it'll make it a lot easier to slide in and out of the, the alloy while, while, while uh, making it. So you just want to screw the nuts on a couple of threads onto the bolt, um, just enough so it's actually gripped and you don't want it too tight or else it won't um, slide into the groove. So we basically want it so the flat bit of the nut um, is pointing in towards the bracket and the, the kind of chamfered end, edges are, are pointing outwards. Um, so those edges um, basically go in towards the centre of the profile and um, just makes it easier to, to grip it on the flat bit. Now all you do is um, slide the nut down onto the profile like so, it can be a little bit tricky to get it done right. Grab your uh, 5mm allen key and just nip that up so it stops uh, falling off. 
doesn't, doesn't need to be too tight there, but it's just so it doesn't uh, slide up and down itself. And then do the same with the other end. Grand. And then we're just going to slide this into the uh, main pieces. Okay, so we have the kind of main base frame of the actual chassis built up now, and um, so everything else then is just going on top. So what I like to do next is the rubber feet. So the feet are supplied with a um, in a bag with all the nuts and bolts that you need for the feet in it, just to make it a little bit easier. The rubber feet come with the other type of nut that uh, has this little tab sticking off it here that basically, once you slide it in the profile, acts like a spring, so it keeps the, the nut up to the top, and um, just makes it a lot easier to get the bolt in. So you just squeeze the tab a little bit, put it into the slot, and it stays in there and it doesn't fall out, it's quite tight. So at this point then, this is where my screwdriver comes in handy, and you just pull the, the spring all the way along to wherever you want the, the feet to go. So roughly, you want kind of one of each, they come with six feet, so three each side. So roughly you want one near enough each end, and then one in the middle. And these bolts are a little smaller, so you need a, a four mil Allen key for these. And you just screw it straight into the nut. And again, it doesn't have to be too tight for the moment, because we can still move them around a bit to get them just in the right position. Okay, and now we're done um, underneath the rig, so we can just flip it over and start working from the, um, putting the other pieces on top. At this point now, we can uh, make sure the gap between these two pieces here are correct. So you want roughly about 500 mil uh, maximum between the edge of this uh, piece and the edge of this piece. So we're just going to pull a little bit closer. We're ready now to bolt on our next pieces. Um, so there are these two here that are labeled L. So they will go roughly there and there. And then you'll put your uh, seat mounts on top of these. Now to mount these L pieces on here, and um, because the groove in the alloy is basically at, at 90 degree angle to, the, to what we're uh, bolting it to, we don't use the silver anti-rotation brackets, we use these other black ones. Um, so just be careful, there is two different types in the packet. Um, they are packaged separately, so just don't mix them up um, when you separate everything out. So the ones we want to use now are uh, with a countersunk hole in it, so basically you have like a, this sort of a chamfer in, in, in the hole um, that the, the special bolts, the countersunk bolts, will, the head will go into. Um, but there is also another type of bracket in the kit that just has a standard hole, so just make sure you're not using them ones. So we're going to use the uh, 13 by 13 nuts with the, the little spring on for these, just to make it a little bit easier to uh, get the bolt in and grab the, grab the threads and nuts. So because we need to put the nuts um, in the groove that basically it's already closed because we have these two uh, pieces on it. The, you just need to pop them um, straight into the groove and it is possible, it's a bit tricky, but that's again why I use the little screwdriver. So if you just squeeze the, the spring into it fairly close, push the whole lot down, and then just wiggle it around until the nut then is popping up to the top. So we just want to put two in each bar, um, fairly close to the end of each one. Now at this point we're going to build up a couple of these uh, 90 degree brackets with uh, one of the, the normal 13 by 25 um, nuts. So we use these small um, M8 by 16 countersunk uh, bolts. So as I was explaining earlier with the countersunk, countersunk when you put that bolt in there and it, it, it just makes it nice and flush. Um, which obviously looks a lot better and it's just a bit more practical if, if you need more space. So we just want to screw that nut on just kind of one thread or so. <clears throat> then slide this bracket in the lower groove. Just slide it in until it's around there. And the same with this one. Okay, so now you just grab two more bolts uh, with your 5mm allocate again. 
and just find where the nut is, uh, find sort of a hole in, the, in this 90 degree bracket, meets up with the nut that you already have placed in the profile. And just screw it in, so again, it's just, just on a couple of threads, it doesn't need to be too tight for the minute, so you can still move it around. So just one other thing to note is, uh, you'll notice in the instructions, SRC have these brackets on the outside, um, so I just prefer to put them on the inside after having built loads of them already, and um, I did just decide to do that just purely because one, it looks a lot better from the outside as well, just so you don't see your brackets, and also um, just it, it allows you to adjust the, these um, frames a little bit wider as well. So if you have, if you imagine if you have the bracket on the outside, you can only gonna go as far into, uh, until the groove ends, whereas if, when you're on the inside, you can you know you can make it a lot wider for just a, a wider seat or different frames or whatever. Just and um, allows a lot more adjustability. Now once you have them all in there, you can just slide this out until the inside edge of this profile is meeting the, the inside edge of uh, the A pieces, the main pieces. Just make sure it's roughly good and square, and then you can tighten up them, all them bolts. So to actually mount the seat to this, um, SRC supply these 90 degree brackets that are different to them ones, so the ones with just the hole in them, not the countersunk hole. And um, so you basically can just bolt these brackets straight on here. And if you've, you if you have a, a bottom mounted seat, you can just bolt it straight in. Um, or if you have your own rails or a slider or something, you can bolt it straight to these. Or alternatively, you can use these seat mounts um, that are basically our own design and, and, uh, and brand. Um, and these are extremely adjustable. So you can just bolt them into the top here um, of the rail. You can use the nuts and bolts that SRC provide you. Um, you can bolt them in there and then if you have a side mounted seat like most motorsport seats um, are side mounted you can just bolt straight in through the side um, holes here and you can uh, higher it, lower it, tilt it whatever way you want um, and also move it forward or back on this as well so these are sold separately and they're around about 35 euro or so um, so you'll find them on our website um, in the seat mounting section for now I'm just going to use the standard SRC 90 degree uh, brackets. So to bolt these in, you just use the uh, 13 by 13 mil nuts to slide, slide into, the, into the groove there. And then the M8 by 20 uh, dome head bolts. The next thing now is to mount the two main uprights. And um, that'll basically come straight up from here um, and hold your steering wheel bracket on. So the brackets they supply to uh, mount those uprights are these really hefty alloy uh, six mil brackets. So you can see all the holes already pre-drilled in them. So they will basically mount on here and here. Uh, the brackets are the same, so it doesn't matter which one you use each side. And then the, the upright then bolt into these four holes here and go straight up. I'm gonna get started by building these with the, the nuts and bolts all screwed together. Um, we're using the M8 by 20 dome head bolts, same as we just used with the, the brackets that we just put on there for seat. So you just put the bolt in there. Again, the flat bit of the nut um, goes closest to the head of the bolt. So just screw it on, about two threads, um, and then that's all you need. So I'm just gonna do the rest of them. It'll make things a lot easier to just slide the whole bracket in here, and then just slide the upright piece in from the top, um, and then we can just tighten it all up when, when, when it's in there. Once the pieces are near enough um, in the kind of middle, you want to get your measuring tape and measure from the end of that um, alloy plate to the end of the profile. And you want to get roughly between 350 and 400 mil. So I'm just going to bring it back. So we'll set it to about 350 for, for uh, this example. Now that, that measurement can be anything you want. So this is just a guide to get to just, just to get you started. So once you actually get in, you sit in the seat and feel where the pedals and wheel are, um, you probably will want to move them forward or back somewhat just to get yourself comfortable. But yeah, this is just roughly in the right, in the right position. The main uprights then are the ones labeled D and they're 45 by 90 mil alloy profile. So they just add that little bit more strength 
and um, because on top of these you're going to be mounting your steering wheel um, and also your pedal tray is going to be bolting off these as well so you just need that extra little bit of strength in the middle. The next pieces then are labelled E, so they're just for the front of the whole uh, pedal kind of base assembly. So they will basically mount roughly around there. Um, but the important thing with these ones just to note is one end of the centre hole here is actually threaded. Um, so that end is just standard, that end is, is threaded. You can see it quite clearly in person when you look um, and basically the bolts just screw straight into that. So it just makes it a lot handier then because the the plates that SOC provide you um, are these fairly, again, really, really hefty alloy plates. So you basically just bolt it in through there. So there's a countersunk hole on one side of the middle, um, and then you use a, a countersunk bolt. So there's only two of these bolts that are this length, so you can't really mix them up. And they basically just screw in there. You just want to get the plate roughly straight, so just make sure it's not kind of bent like that. Um, so roughly straight in line with the edge of the profile and tighten that bolt up there. So to mount these bars to the profile, again we're just going to use the uh, dome head bolts and then the 30 by 25 mil uh, nuts. So again, just assemble these on this first and then just slide it up the, the profile to tighten it in place. It doesn't really matter where these um, actually mount on, so just put them roughly around an inch away from the, the end of the profile. Next, we're gonna make up the uh, pedal base tray separately um, and then we'll slide it onto the rig afterwards. So, you just basically get your two pieces that are la uh, labeled F and they're going to be the outside of the kind of box that we're going to make and then the two pieces labeled G will basically just go inside these. You'll see as I'm making them but um, they are slightly different measurements so just make sure you don't mix them up. So next we're going to use these uh, 90 degree brackets again and um, just be careful you're using the ones with the, the countersunk hole on them this time. So they basically will just bolt on to the front of each upright here and then to the back of each the smaller uprights and the uh, pedal tray then will slide into the nuts on these and uh, bolt all together. So next you just get your pedal tray that we've already made up and um, you basically just slide it in then sort of nuts on these 90 degree brackets and go into the, the grooves on the outside here. So just to make sure your pedal tray is level, um, you want to just measure from the bottom of these uh, black brackets to the top of the profile on this side, make sure this one's the same, and then again just measure this one and make sure this one's the same. The last thing then with the pedal tray is to just use the, the standard 90 degree brackets, the ones with the, the straight through hole, not the camera hole. Um, and you're meant to bolt these onto the G bars, the inside of them. Um, just somewhere to make it make some, some, some sort of a square, and it just completely depends on your pedals. So you can you can mount to the inside, to the outside, uh, really wherever you want to be able to just get a bolt up through them and into your pedals. Um, so you're meant to use the 13 by 13 um, mil nuts. So you just, again, squeeze them close together and just pop them straight into the grooves like we did with these uh, nuts there earlier on. The next thing then is the serum mounting plate. 
So it's a fairly hefty 6 mil thick alloy plate and um, bent to the edges. It's all made from one piece. They've their nice SRC logo and um, laser cut in there. There's, as you can see, there's loads of holes um, in the middle there to allow you to bolt on all the most popular kind of steel wheels straight on there. Obviously, if you have a random wheel that doesn't fit in here, you can just drill your own hole and, and bolt it in. There's, um, there's plenty of options available. So this basically just bolts in the middle here. Um, again, it's really adjustable for whether you want the forward, back, kind of different angles, and obviously what height you want. So we're just going to use, again, the 13 by 13 um, spring loaded nuts. So they just slide down there and this just bolts straight into them. So there's no need to go really tight with any of the bolts really yet um, because you probably will be adjusting either the height of your wheel or um, how far forward or back it goes because everything is adjustable. So when you get your, your seat on and you sit in with the wheel and pedals on, um, you're gonna wanna move everything around just to make sure you're, you're really comfortable in the rig. And then once in the right place, go around to every single bolt on the whole chassis and just make sure it's really, really tight um, because a loose bolt somewhere might cause a little bit of flex that you don't want. So just make sure every bolt's tight at the end. So the last piece we're gonna bolt on is this X-shaped alloy bracket. So I've gone ahead and put in the nuts and bolts already, but uh, yeah, they're basically just the M8 by 16 canvas on bolts and then the rectangular shaped uh, 13 by 25 mil nuts. So it, the bracket just bolts onto the front of the, the uprights here and yeah, it just provides a lot of strength to the, to the main uprights to stop them kind of falling over one way or the other or, or twisting in and out. So the very last thing to do then is um, all these plastic end caps just to cover the, the bare bits of profile then, mainly for aesthetics obviously, but um, yeah, I, I like to do them at the very end when you have everything set up, just in case you need to move everything so you're not taking them in and out. But yeah, you basically just clip them onto the end of the profile and they just push right in. You can get them tied in with a, with, with a, a small top of a hammer. And then for the uh, silver 90 degree brackets, then you use the, the end caps down for them as well. They just clip on. But again, don't put them on until everything is in the right position. So if you're 100% sure you're not gonna move, move it again and have to take them off again. So guys, that's basically it with our SRC One Plus chassis. Um, ready to bolt on your seat, uh, steering wheel, pedals, and connect it all up and away you go. And, you can also bolt on any of the SRC accessories like their monitor mounts, they do a single screen, triple screen, and they do keyboard trays, mouse pads, and a whole heap of accessories on marinemonster.com that are all compatible with this rig. So I hope you found this video interesting. Please don't forget to check out our YouTube channel for more videos like this. Subscribe to our channel and follow us on Facebook and Instagram. And yeah, again, if you have any questions about anything, just let us know. We're here happy to help you.